Hi there, I'm Daniel. On the 1st of February, I became the proud owner of a brand new RTX 3050. I was very lucky to get it because supply was limited and the price of $480 was pretty fair considering the local market. So what did I get for almost twice the MSRP? Why the most basic model of course, the Gainward Pegasus. It's a single fan configuration, no backplate, no frills. Okay, that's a lie, you can't say there are no frills when there is software configurable RGB! But the most important part is obviously the performance. Now when you look at larger channels, when they review the card, usually they pair it with a decently fast modern processor. That's because they want to give the car the best chance to shine, to show you the best performance that you can get out of it. But you're not always going to have the ideal scenario, maybe you're trying to upgrade an older system with something like an i3 from 2015. Can you get away with using that? Let's find out! For those of you who are not aware, a bottleneck happens when one of the components in your system is performing so poorly that it prevents other components from achieving their full potential. Most commonly you have the processor bottlenecking the GPU. So let's draw some direct comparisons between a bottleneck system and one that isn't to see what exactly the results tell us. Digital Foundry showed us the Borderlands 3 benchmark running on badass settings in 1080p. They got around 50 to 60 frames per second, occasionally dropping to upper 40s, which is not bad at all. But they used an i9 processor. When I try the same benchmarks, the results are very different. In the first half we get around 40 frames, pushing up to 45, but also dropping to 30. Towards the end we can see the frames per second take a steep nosedive in some scenes and overall the average is around 38. If you look at the stats, you'll see that the graphics card is actually doing the best it can, but the processor is pushed to its limit too, so the overall performance suffers greatly. The techniques reported an average FPS of 418 running the game on medium at 1080p. If I try the same I get 47 which is less than half the performance. So why is the difference so large at lower settings? Well if you look at the stats this time around the utilization of the GPU is all over the place and it's way below full capacity, unlike the CPU which is always in the upper 90s. At 1440p they report an average frame rate of 75. On my machine I get 52. This time around the GPU is again working at full capacity most of the time and the CPU is the limiting factor in the overall performance. Tech Test City reported 55 average frames per second running the game on Ultra in 1080p with a GPU paired with an i5 processor. The average frames I received was 38. If you compare all the benchmarks that they took across different settings and resolutions, the results are quite interesting. The solar term in this graph is the performance at 1440p where low and medium offer the same frame rate, and it seems to perform better than 1080p, both of which are counterintuitive. But this is to be expected in a bottleneck system, a lot of settings are entirely dependent on the GPU, with the most important being resolution. So if it's already not working at full capacity, you won't necessarily see a performance gain when you lower those settings. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game I bought specifically to try on this card. Hardware Unbox reported 66 average frames per second at 1080p with medium settings, which is pretty good. Post Hardware reported 74 average, which is even better. Running the built-in benchmark I got 42, which is not great. If you look at the stats, the GPU is being utilized at about 80-90% to most of the time, sometimes dropping to around 70. The biggest performance drop is at the scene where you move through the crowd of people where you can see frames around 20 and below. Crowds are very CPU intensive so there is a huge bottleneck with the card using less than 40% of its power. At 1440p, hardware and box reported 41 average frames per second. At first glance that's not too far from the 37 frames I get, but notice my minimal frame rate was as low as 11 which is considerably lower than the minimal of 38 that I got. Optimum Tech tried the game at high settings but mixing it with ray tracing and DOSS. As you can see in Bella's mode with ray tracing disabled, he got a very good result of 93 frames per second. Of course I did not get anywhere close to that, in my test there is no performance difference with or without DOSS at 1080p. I actually run a lot of benchmarks for this game and I got some pretty interesting data out of it. At 1080p, ray tracing up, I tried every quality preset with and without the ultra setting of DOSS. 
Now even though the average and maximum frames look good, when the FPS goes down, it really goes down, so the game would be borderline unplayable at times. This is a consistent trend with a benchmark and I had a similar experience actually playing the game. It was pretty rough. But what's more interesting here is that DOSS offers very little difference in performance despite being maxed out. If we raise the resolution to 1440p, we get a slightly different picture. Here you get a considerable increase in performance from DOSS at medium and high settings. Pushing further to 4K, you can see a massive increase in performance across the board. But the most interesting part is when you put all the results with DOSS set to Ultra into one graph. So if you crank DOSS all the way up, it doesn't matter what resolution you're playing at, the results are virtually the same. I'm not even sure if it's because of the bottlenecks or it's supposed to be this way, but it's definitely interesting. For the sake of competition, let's also crank ray tracing all the way up and see what happens. Test it at medium settings and would you look at that, it performs best at 1440p, better than 1080. So that's a lot of graphs and numbers, but what does it all mean? Well, there are two major takeaways. The first one is that no, you cannot get away with using a slow processor like mine. An i3, even a modern one, is probably not going to be enough. You need at least an i5, maybe higher, or something equivalent from uh, AMD, and it has to be a modern processor. Now the second takeaway is a more interesting one, and that's that when you have a bottleneck on your system, lowering the settings is not always going to produce better results. That's because a lot of the settings are only dependent on the graphics card, specifically, like I said, the resolution. So if the game is performing the best at uh, 1440 and you lower it to 1080, you may actually see worse performance, which is counterintuitive, but that's how it works. Bottlenecks do not care about your intuition. They are beyond the realm of reality. This is not uh, in the script. I hope you found this video informative uh, or interesting. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments. And uh, I'll see you next time.